All right, what's happening, y'all? Shabar Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming today with a video breaking down Washington's biggest needs after free agency so far. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean free agency is over. I mean, free agency continues and continues. We can sign that guy in June. Who knows, man? A lot of those big names are still out there, but the most important part of this video is analyzing what our biggest needs are moving forward so far. And I plan on doing a mock draft soon after this. It may come out tomorrow or the day after that. But I wanted to organize my thoughts and get it out there as to what I feel like our biggest needs still are. And it's crazy, too, because some of our biggest needs going into free agency, we didn't even address it at all. So it's kind of funny. It seems like we're still where we were before free agency even started. So even though we may still sign some guys at certain positions of need, I'm starting to think that they're, they're definitely focusing more so on the draft to fill these needs. So we're going to take a look at the current depth chart of the Washington Commanders with all all of the new guys that have been brought in like Carson Wentz and Andrew Norwell and bringing back Bobby McCain and all of the other guys and we're gonna take a look at where we still have big holes at and some of them are even depth wise and we also have to look at who's hurt some projected starters we're not even sure if they're gonna be ready to go week one yet and that may affect how we address the rest of free agency and the draft moving forward so we got to take a look at everything and look at each of these positions and needs as if who will be available week one what do we have ready for week one and that's where things get complicated because love logan thomas definitely a top 10 tight end in the nfl when he's available but will he even be available week one so we got to dive into all of that but before we do make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one also be on the lookout for all of the content all of my channel members know i'm starting the series where i just release raw unedited film sessions we'll look at players highlights if i can't get the all 22 film on them we already started with darian bevers the linebacker from cincinnati i'll probably do jameson williams at receiver next maybe daxton hill safety at michigan next and just because i do a raw and edited version of a film session for them that are for channel members only doesn't mean i won't go back later on possibly before the draft and do a real official film session on them and release it to the public but for now i'm just reserving my raw and edited film sessions to just channel members only so make sure you be on the lookout for that and like i already said i plan on doing a mock draft based on our biggest needs that we still currently have and then of course i have to do a couple of more mock drafts because i'm gonna do a trade back scenario i'm gonna do a trade up scenario so be on the lookout for all of that man and without further ado, let's get it. All right, so to me, future franchise quarterback is still a big need and we're not necessarily going in a particular order we're just going to go based on the depth chart we're just going to work our way down and what our biggest needs still are i feel like future franchise quarterback is still a big need i like taylor heineke as a backup carson wentz even though i'm still not a big fan of the whole trade situation and the situation that we're just in in general right now but i'm gonna get behind them i'm not about to root against them that's still my quarterback right now and i hope everything works out to how ron rivera thinks it will even though i'm not necessarily confident that it will and that's why i don't necessarily like the situation it's not even that i hate carson wentz i just hate what we had to give up to get carson wentz not only just in trade value not only in cap space but it more than likely eliminates us from taking a top quarterback you know my boy malik willis is who i really want in the draft but carson wentz in a vacuum as himself i'm probably a little bit more optimistic about how well he'll play this season than most people i'm just particularly worried about our future I feel like we're sacrificing some of our future for some of our now just to build around Carson Wentz. So unless we go out there and dominate and become like a Super Bowl contender, three years from now, we may be looking back like, what was that even for? Because now we're even further back in our Super Bowl team building process because we pretty much put all of our eggs in one basket for Carson Wentz this season. So I still feel like future franchise quarterback is a big question mark and whenever you have a question mark on who your franchise quarterback is going to be going into the future especially if you don't have this super bowl ready roster all you need is the quarterback on it i feel like our roster is fairly underrated but i don't feel like you just put a carson wentz on this roster and we're instant super bowl contenders so it's kind of weird to be kind of in the middle where we're putting all of our eggs in one basket basically and sacrificing future success for this season but it's not like we just have this oh yeah we're going to the super bowl this year after we got carson wentz so we'll see 
Again, anytime you don't know what your franchise quarterback will be three years from now, if you're uncertain, I feel like that's a problem. Moving down, of course, we have running back issues as well. We brought back JD McKissick, but even just by how the Washington Commanders have talked about how big of a need running back will be going into this draft, I think they're going to try to get some type of power running back. So I would definitely say that's a need. It's definitely not one of the top needs, but it's something that probably will be addressed in the draft or later on in free agency. Again, that's the point of this video. We're not just talking about the biggest needs. I'm just organizing what our needs are to give you a heads up of how we may attack the draft and these later parts of free agency. Again, we could sign a guy tomorrow. We could sign a guy in April, May, June, July. Who knows? This is not what the team will look like week one of the regular season. Even if you exclude the draft, even if the draft didn't exist, some more guys are going to be brought in here. Will they be big names? No idea. Not even necessarily likely, but who knows? Then receiver. Receiver is definitely still a big need. I'm not depending on Curtis Samuel, me personally. Granted, he's making quite a bit of money this year, so it kind of sucks to have to prioritize a receiver, but we're not about to throw Terry McLaurin out there by himself. Even though Cam Sims looks like he's primed to step up and help, and Deami Brown is a really good deep ball target, and Carson Wentz, I mean, he finally has a quarterback that can hit him down the field since he last played with Sam Howell in college. So I'm expecting Deami Brown to at the very least play better than what he did last year to contribute more to be more productive because now we finally have a quarterback that can take advantage of what he's currently best at right now you could probably argue the only thing he's really good at consistently right now and that's getting open deep so i think we have a nice group overall but it would be really nice to get a top playmaker and the draft definitely looks like where we may attack that because there's so many options in there so don't be surprised if we go receiver first two rounds at all then also looking at offensive line it gets a little tricky because i mean you have andrew norwell just starting left guard i'm good with that charles leno of course you're starting left tackle chase Roulier is starting center Wes Schweitzer, preferred to be my backup swing guard, kind of like Cornelius Lucas is our backup swing tackle, but he's cool with starting at right guard. And then I guess Sadiq Charles will be your backup swing guard for now. Tyler Larson is a decent backup center. So like offensive line depth, we may want to look into that. I would still prefer if we can somehow find a starting right guard somehow may try to address it in free agency or we may try to find a gem in the draft john moscow is one of the best positional coaches in the entire nfl so if anybody could turn somebody into a starting right guard it's him my main problem with this offensive line situation is just how injury prone they seem to be these past couple of years if these guys could promise me that they would be healthy all 17 games i would love this offensive line i think this is still a top 10 offensive line in the nfl but that's the problem are any of these guys gonna stay healthy for 17 games I can expect Charles Leno to. That's really about it. Maybe Andrew Norwell will play the majority of games, but Wes Schweitzer, who knows? Chase Roulier, super who knows? And Samuel Cosme, just in the first year that he played last year, his rookie season, he missed like a third of the game. So who knows? I mean, we have Cornelius Lucas to step up at tackle, but what happens if one of these guards gets hurt? We're gonna have to depend on Sadiq Charles, and I still think he has immense talent. He just hasn't been able to hone it together. He's barely played, and then the opportunities he got two years years ago he got hurt before he even really got a chance to go out there and do anything so really last year was his first true rookie season kind of and even then he didn't play a lot and he played everywhere he had to play tackle he had to play guard so who knows how much he actually progressed there so I don't want to put Carson Wentz's health in the hands of a Sadiq Charles having to start at left guard or right guard any particular day so that's why I'm worried about the offensive line but again if you can promise me everybody's healthy this is a really good offensive line I think it's actually pretty underrated and then and lastly before we move on from offense you got to look at this tight end position, man. It's ugly. Who knows if Logan Thomas is even going to be available for week one. We lost Ricky Seals Jones to what I believe the Giants. Sam is Reyes. Who knows how raw he still is. So that pretty much leaves us as John Bases, our only dependable tight end, our only dual threat tight end, healthy tight end that's probably going to be ready in a full go by week one. So they're going to have to draft somebody. It was reported that we were interested in trying to get Austin Hooper, but only for less money that he ended up getting somewhere else i'm glad we have evaluated austin hooper to be worth the money that he's worth he's getting more money than he deserves from other teams and i'm glad we're not one of those teams that are crazy enough to give it to him we dodged the first bullet and it looks like we also kind of dodged the second one with him getting more money than i was willing to give him to whatever team he just went to in free agency we were also interested in that one 49ers tight end that's not george kittle can't remember
remember his name right now so like apparently we have been in on tight ends in free agency we just haven't been able to get any of them so that goes to show that we do feel like we have a needed tight end right now so don't be surprised if we take one relatively high in the draft even though this isn't a good tight end draft or maybe we sign one of those veteran guys later on in the all season going into like training camp or something i know we're definitely going to bring in some undrafted free agents they're probably going to bring in at least two undrafted free agents at tight end at this point it's just fight it out battle it out somebody's got to come out the rubble as a good tight end because as of right now the only guy we can depend on that's a good combination of both good and ready and healthy is john bates right here in the middle moving on to defense edge rusher wise i mean i'm still worried about chase young being healthy by week one but i think he'll be ready because he was hurt weeks before logan thomas got hurt so if logan thomas even has a chance of being ready by week one he does it's not like it's impossible for him to but i'm confident that chase young will be ready by week one but that's still noteworthy to watch out for so but overall like defensive end wise we have plenty of depth i mean you have casey two hill shaka tony fa obata who we just signed boomy rutimi daniel wise james smith williams now james smith williams technically counts as defensive tackle and defensive in depth he can play both so that's a really useful versatile piece right there you know how they preach positional flex there goes one of those examples right there kind of one of our secret weapons that i mean if he continues to develop he's going to end up being a really good player especially as a depth piece but then as far as defensive line wise i worry about the depth we lost mad ionitis and tim settle in the same free agency period in the same offseason so at the deron Payne and jonathan allen now you have i guess tyler clark i'm not exactly sure who that is you have david bada who i believe can be pretty good he shined at times in the offseason but i don't even believe he made the 53 man roster when it was all said and done so technically jay smith williams is really your true backup defensive tackle right now with the way we rotate defensive linemen jay smith williams is projected to play quite a bit of snaps just on any game basis he's technically not even depth as far as like if an injury happens he's gonna play even if deron Payne and jonathan allen are fully healthy because we just rotate defensive linemen so if there's an injury who's gonna be ready to step up behind any of these three guys david bada tyler clark are gonna be one of those guys thrown into the rotation who will be their backup so it's just like defensive line depth especially interior defensive line depth is still a big need and then obviously one of our biggest needs by far i think our biggest needs are free safety and middle linebacker right now middle linebacker man first of all jamin davis is not a middle linebacker i guess they didn't get the memo go ahead and move cole holcomb to sam move Jamin Davis to Will, and when in doubt, let Jamin Davis lose some weight, go back to his college weight, gain some of that speed back, some of that quickness, some of that explosion, and try to get him to do what Landon Collins was doing last year because it worked really well for Landon Collins. And Jamin Davis is still an athletic freak. He's still very talented. Just middle linebacker just wasn't working for him. He was technically playing out of position. We tried it. I'm glad we tried it because you never know until you get a no. You never know if Jamin Davis can't play middle linebacker until he tries to, and I'm glad that they gave him really a a lot of the season to do it even though they benched them a lot i don't know why they benched them especially like against the giants like we weren't playing for a playoff berth a playoff spot so i don't know why he didn't play a lot then but jamin davis is pretty much a will linebacker i don't necessarily think he's going to be a waste of a draft pick yet i think we move him to will linebacker he may become a star there and literally be the direct replacement for what landon collins was doing last year and then we'll all be happy but still at the end of the day we do not have a mike linebacker I mean, I guess you could technically say David Mayo is our starting Mike linebacker right now. As even though I mean, all he's good at is run stopping, and that's it. Uh, and really here for special teams, Jordan Kunijic here for special teams, Milo Eifler some potential there, but not depending on him to start at Mike linebacker. Neither would I with Dejon Harris, Khalid Hudson, kind of a safety linebacker hybrid. Maybe he steps up into that Landon Collins role. Who knows? But either way, I don't see a single starting Mike linebacker on this roster at all we knew that going into free agency it's crazy that we still haven't addressed that you still have guys like bobby wagner out there you still have aj johnson from the denver broncos i believe kyle van noy is still available if you want to go cheaper veteran but sometimes injury prone you have dante hightower from the new england patriots still out there there's quite a bit of options at linebacker still available anthony hitchens we tried to go get jermaine carter from carolina but the Chiefs swept under us and got him before we could so we're clearly still interested in trying to find a middle linebacker before we head into the draft we just haven't been successful i'm pretty sure they've at least called bobby wagner but he's probably out of our price range but like i already said there's so many other options at mike linebacker that are better than anything we have currently on the roster so i hope we bring one of those 
those guys in for a really good deal soon then corner i mean for me like in the draft if one of those really good corners falls to you maybe not at 11 because i'm a fan of trading if we're not getting kyle hamilton if we're not getting the quarterback i say you might as well trade back and so if you trade back and one of those top corners sauce gardner Derek stingley falls to you then i say you take them just go best player available but i wouldn't say corner is necessarily a big need i think benjamin st juice when whatever health situation he was dealing with last year is done i think he was a really solid corner especially for a rookie you know corners one of the hardest positions to transition from the college to the nfl is quarterback and cornerback easily those two by far and there's a big gap and then it's everybody else so the fact that benjamin st juice is already pretty productive his rookie season i'm really excited about his future again as long as whatever concussion situation he was dealing with is figured out i think we'll be solid there that's three solid corners william jackson started to really come into himself at the end of the season man he got really good once he finally figured out how to run the jack the real defense once jack the real finally learned how to deploy him quarterbacks just rarely threw it his way he was pretty much just shutting down a whole half of the field quarterbacks didn't even look his direction after a certain point in the season it was really nice to see that and then Kendall Fuller, I mean, super up and down, hit or miss some games. There were some games he made great plays. Like, I remember one time, I think it was like a two-point conversion. He had, like, a great pass breakup play. But then sometimes he's just getting killed. But either way, I think that's a solid cornerback group. I don't think that's necessarily a big need. But again, I mean, if you have a chance to get Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley, especially outside of the top 11, if we trade back, I could definitely see them going with that because, I mean, that's just too much talent to pass up. And then safety wise, love Cameron Curl, love what he does is playing pretty much all over the secondary as a strong safety, slot corner, free safety, Buffalo nickel, all of that. And I like Bobby McCain, like him in the slot. I like him as one of the safeties back deep if we're running like cover two, cover three, but we can't run cover one with these guys. Now, granted, Bobby McCain's second half of the season got better, but I still really want a rangy, single high ball hawk type of free safety. Like I really want like a Daxton Hill in the draft who I feel like is literally going to be Marcus Williams, but fast from Michigan and so like if we can get a guy like that I mean you still have Tyron Matthew out there who isn't necessarily that but he would allow you to mix up coverages because he's basically like a Cameron Curl where he could play pretty much any position in the secondary kind of the same thing with Bobby McCain so to have Bobby McCain Cameron Curl and Tyron Matthew in the field at any time offensive coordinators and quarterbacks will never know what coverages we're running because any of those guys could literally end up being anywhere doing anything on any given play so I like that idea even though Tyron Matthew doesn't fit the single high free safety the rangy guy that i want us to go get i'm down to go get a tyron matthew since he's still available but if we don't heading into the draft we could trade back and somehow land daxton hill i think that's a home run selection in the draft so i definitely feel like free safety specifically is still a big need jeremy reeves i mean who knows right now and i mean we have plenty of strong safeties again Cameron curl strong safety Derek Forrest, strong safety when in doubt Khalid hudson kind of strong safety i think we're solid at strong safety even after releasing deshaza everett and i really hope everything with this situation gets right i'm definitely rooting for the man but yeah i just think free safety especially middle linebacker and defensive tackle depth are our biggest needs on defense and of course with offense like we already discussed future franchise quarterback a power running back a starting tight end technically for week one at the very least tight end depth a playmaking receiver and then guard depth interior offensive line depth those are my problems for the offense but don't sleep on special teams now because as of right now deandre carter is not on our roster and he was one of the best returners in the nfl last year he was also kind of our wide receiver too with curtis samuel hurt diami brown not being as good as we hoped in his rookie season so like deandre carter not being on the roster is a huge hole to fill right now honestly that's a very slept on hole i really hope we end up bringing him back because as of right now your starting punt return is dax milne who's decent He's going to be one of those guys that catches it pretty much every time, but he's not going to get a lot of yards out of the return game. He's not going to be able to flip field positioning, and that's what I love about DeAndre Carter. He was a field position flipper, and then you have Jared Patterson in on the kick returning, 
and that's pretty solid i mean i guess you could see curtis samuel being a part of that or maybe danny johnson since we re-signed him as well but either way none of these guys are necessarily game changers as returners like deandre carter was for his last year so please bring deandre carter back man i'm gonna be sick if i look at my phone one of these days and see the deandre carter sign with some other team i'm gonna be absolutely sick but at least we figured out kicker we brought back joey sly and brian johnson so that's really good to know we got kicker down pack joey sly to me is a franchise kicker brian johnson is a really good backup kicker to have just in case he's probably going to be inactive on game days but man those are two really good kickers right there bro but kick returner wise i'm a little worried a little little worried right there but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video what do you feel like our biggest needs are right now you can put them in order if you want to definitely not demanding it from anybody because i didn't either yet i will put it in the order with one of my videos that are coming up but as a right now i just wanted to look at the depth chart and discuss our overall biggest needs and we're gonna move forward from there again i have a mock draft on the way so again definitely get in the comment section let me know what you feel our biggest needs are right now and how you would possibly feel them would you wait till the draft or would you sign a certain free agent make sure to include those free agent names in the comment section as well and as always man i appreciate all of the support man Shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now and make sure y'all go become sponsors because i'm doing film sessions off just raw uncut and edited since i'm not editing them i'm gonna be able to do a lot more since i'm literally just watching film pausing rewinding laughing analyzing things that's all i'm doing i'm not doing any severe editing i'm gonna be putting those out constantly i mean it may even get to a point getting closer to the draft where i start putting them out daily so those will be for channel members only so definitely go become a channel member so you can tune into those I already put out a darian bevers one and be on the lookout because i'm working on a jameson williams one next probably gonna do daxton hill after that of course i gotta do some of my georgia bulldogs even though i don't necessarily think we're gonna draft probably any of them especially not a lot of them maybe james cook later maybe channing tindall later um i don't know i love jordan davis love trevon walker love nicobe dean i just highly doubt that we get any of those guys but my georgia bulldogs man i'm gonna have to do some film sessions on them and of course i gotta do george pickens because that out of any georgia player that's draft eligible in april george pickens is the most realistic and also the guy that i want the most all into one person so I'm definitely going to do a George Pickens raw and edited film session again, which will only be available to channel members. So make sure you go become a channel member to tune in for those. Because like I said, it's going to get to the point I start doing those daily. Since I'm not editing them, it's like, why not? Little 20, 30 minute film sessions. But yeah, man, I appreciate all the support. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out. Be on the lookout for a mock draft soon.